Good day guys, Ross today and today we're looking at Launchbox and oh my god, is this a front end? Now you know that I bring the front ends to you and I try and, you know, big these front ends up because there's so much work that goes into these. You know, Hyperspin is probably the most favoured one on my channel because to me it's got all the bells and whistles, it's got all the flavour, it's got all the art, it shows you, it's got a pizzazz about it. Um, Retro FE, the next one that's coming along because I think that's going to be the next evolution in visuals. Now this one, Launchbox, it has found its niche and I think it's an excellent niche because it's something that many of you guys have been hanging on for for a long time. It's got usability, not in just in terms of actually utilizing the GUI itself as in choosing your systems, choosing your games, scrolling through, having a look around, searching and all, all that kind of stuff. It does that exceptionally well and I will cover that in a second. What this does and the major thing that it brings to the market is compatibility in terms of setting this up. This is a doddle to get up and running on your computer. I mean, if you are, I don't know, going down the road of hyperspin and you've been brushed up against it before, you will know it's a pain in the ass. I try my best to help you out, but there are certain pitfalls and certain amount of you, you aren't that technically able. You know, it's not an insult, it's just the way the world is. Some people are good at tech, some people are not. Some people haven't just got the time for it, for God's sake. I understand that completely. Now, this is where I think it finds its niche because Launchbox has found a way to get this not only up and running on your computer, but to get all your systems that you are using working inside Launchbox on your computer without any hassle whatsoever. I mean minimum. I mean, this can play your emulators, so I don't know, uh, Wii, GameCube, um, Main, Arcade Classics, Tato Type X, uh, all the ones that I cover on my channel, Sega Saturn, Nintendo DS, Jesus, I can go forever. Um, it plays those, but also it plays all your PC games without any hassle whatsoever. In fact, it actually <laughs> looks for them on your computer. If you've got a Steam library already set up on your computer, it will automatically scrape all your games and get them configured and ready to run with a click of a button. Again, we'll cover that in a second. It also, DOSBox, everybody know it's a pain in the ass. There's thousands and thousands of games on DOSBox, you know, and it's a forgotten gem. And it can be, you know, a little tricky to say the least setting it up on other uh, front ends. This one, again, click of the button, it's up and running in no time. It really does take usability and functionality to the next level. Now, as you can see, it's not the most beautiful prom queen out of the box. You know, when you put this in comparison to Retro FE, as we were looking at, and especially Hyperspin, this isn't all the singing, all the dancing, bells and whistles that some of you may like from a front end. But that's the thing that you've got to take into consideration when you're thinking about your front end. Do you want it to be all singing or dancing or do you want functionality? And for me, functionality is Launchbox's niche. Now, first off, like I said, everything is almost done out of the box. <laughs> it's Launchbox, that's probably why I called it this. <laughs> but all that you do is basically tell it what where your ROMs are, it will actually give you links of where to download the emulators and, and even tell you how to set them up. It is exceptional at what it does. But once you've added it, it will automatically download all the information relevant for that game. It will automatically download all the artwork, all the genres, all the platform information, the age ratings, the actual user ratings. It really does do the next level of, well, functionality again it's a key word for this one functionality and usability it is on par now the other things that when you're navigating through the other front ends they're limited in I don't know so let's say for example hyperspin you can first off load your system so you choose whatever system Wii, uh, MAME, Sega Saturn 
and you choose it you go into it the only thing that you can do is then choose that system so once you've chosen it you go into a sub wheel now when you're in your sub wheel you can then scroll through all the games without any hassle whatsoever the problem is that what you've got is just a big long list of games and they're listed alphabetically um, or databasically in other words whatever database you've got set up it will list them in that order and there's not many other options other than choosing your favorites or choosing your genre so the problem is then it's all pre-configured to whatever you put in there again adding another layer of complexity to the actual setup of it and also giving the well you have to actually input that yourself so that's where i think it falls down in terms of launch box however it's all done for you everything along each step of the way is done for you it it picks you up it's, it's like your little child and it picks you up by the hand and it walks you along your merry way of gaming and enjoyment <laughs> it takes all the pitfalls and problems away now don't get me wrong you're still going to have to configure your emulators configure your controls however this actually utilizes them in an exceptional way and to be honest if you've already got another front end and you're already using rocket launcher you can actually already use that program in conjunction with this so in other words you don't even need to configure it it's already done for you but we will cover that in later videos for now though let's actually have a look at what the hell i am talking about because this is i feel the next evolution for people who just want to get gaming for god's sake they don't want to mess around so when you load it up you are greeted with something similar to this now don't get me wrong you will not have anything in there you will have um no games no systems no nothing inside your front end it will just be blank you will probably have your desktop behind it and you will need to do a little bit of configuration but watch this guys watch how easy this is to get up and running with a system now as you can see i have already done nintendo 64 uh, Nintendo Entertainment System, Nintendo Game Boy, Wii, PC, and Turbo Graphics 16. Now, this is the default uh, menu. You can change the colors, you can change the layout, you can change the sizes of the boxes, all that kind of stuff. You can change the actual styles and everything of the boxes which you wish to do. Uh, also, when it downloads, it gives you uh, all the details of the game, it gives you fan art in the background, and you can change all this to your own you know taste to be honest at the end of the day there's a hell of a lot of functionality that you can go into there's loads of layers i haven't got time to go through this in this video otherwise we'll be here all day but what i want to do is show you the actual functionality of it at this early stage so to be honest there's no better way of doing that with actually showing you the process of setting up a system on this front end so this is how easy it is guys First off, go to your tools menu up at the top here. Now you've got loads of options that we may go into on various other videos as we go through it. However, the first one up at the top here, tools. This is how you actually add a system onto your, well, onto your front end. So, as you can see, we've got import. Now you can choose launch box zip package. So in other words, it's got its own pre-packaged uh, stuff that it, you can add to it itself. You can add MS-DOS games as we were talking about before. It's pre-configured to set it up in a way which is very user-friendly in its setup. You can add ROM files, which is basically your well, emulation side of it all. So your SNES, NES, Wii, GameCube, Nintendo 64, uh, Amiga, Sinclair, Spectrum, ZX, blah de blah, more forever. But you get the gist on that one. And also you can do your Steam games or just your normal Windows games, to be honest. It's all set out in a way which is so simple. And, well, let's actually do one. Let's do a ROM file. So I'm going to set up an emulator in this front end to show you how easy it is. Now, bear in mind, we're going to have to rely probably upon my internet speed at this point. And... Uh, for those of you who watch my channel, you'll know it's not the best to say the least. But let's get stuck in anyway. So, first stage then. Welcome to the ROM. The setup, yeah, blah, blah, whatever. Get out my face. Right, this bit, what it's asking me for is the ROMs that I want to add to the system. So, what I want to add here is not all my ROMs, but the specific set for one system. 
So let's have a look. I don't know what to do. I don't want to do something too big because it'll take all day for me to download all the art because my internet speed is shocking. So let's find one of my ROM uh, folders. Let's see what I've got here. Um, what's good but not too big. I don't want to be downloading forever. Let's have a look at the Sega system. I've done a lot of... Uh, I've done a lot of Nintendo so far. So let's have a look at what Sega's got to offer. Um, Sega Master System. Why not? Let's get stuck in. Let's add that. Okay. Right, so I've told it where the folder is. If you've got your ROM split for whatever reason, whatever personal opinion you may have on, you know, organizing your ROM sets, um, you can add more than one location as long as they're all to do with this same system. So in other words, in my example here, I'm choosing the master system. So the next thing that we need to do is click on next, uh, platform that the ROMs are belong to so basically we've already chosen the master system but this doesn't know that we're actually meaning it to load the master system because well it's not scanned the games it doesn't know the name of the folder so now we're telling it what system all these games belong to so let's go here let's have a look at probably come under Sega Saturn will it Sega Sega Saturn Sega master system yep there we go easy as that show default platforms yeah Next one then, choose an emulator. So at this point then, you can choose one that you've already configured or you can use one that, well, but tickles your fancy. For just to show you, I mean, I'm gonna be running this through RetroArch, but I wanna actually show you how easy it is to actually add a emulator to this. So I'm actually gonna, in fact, I'll click edit. It says messing then, doesn't it? Now, as you can see, if you were to click add and you had no previous systems already installed on this uh, no emulator should I say then you'll be greeted with a box well exactly like this but it will more than likely all be blank so here at the top right hand corner it will give you what it recommends as the emulator for this system now don't take its word for it because to be honest a lot of the time it likes to use standalone emulators whereas in a lot of the time you can actually get away with installing one i.e. retroarch and that will cover you know 90% of all your systems that you want to add to be honest you know it does the Sega Game Gear, the, the Nintendo Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, uh, Mega Drive, Genesis, Master System, SNES, NES, blah de blah, goes on forever. But, you know, you can get away with just setting up one emulator at this point. So I've done that. I've chosen RetroArch. So all you need to do is drop down box above, find whatever setup you want to add, then browse for your EXE file. I'm not going to show you how to do that, but basically you find your EXE file for the emulator and that's it, it's done. I mean, don't get me wrong, you probably are going to have to configure your controls and your screen resolution and all that stuff outside of here, but actually adding this emulator to it, it's just a case of showing it where it is and telling it what its name is. And that's it, it's done. The rest of the stuff is quite technical, you don't have to worry about it at this stage because, well, to be honest, it, it's all user intuitive. It, it sets a lot of this up as common sense. So unless you've got any weird systems going on, this should be tickety boot and working with Without any issues so next thing then is obviously click OK and that's RetroArch now up and running on our system now next thing that we need to do is obviously click on next <laughs> now it's asking us do we want to keep this in a current location or do we want to move all our stuff to a standardized location now because I use very well because I use various front ends especially for these tutorials or guides or reviews um, I like to keep everything in its own particular place. Well, but what it can do is, if you've added this ROM set from a download or something like that, you, it will actually organize itself by doing copy these to the Launchbox game folder or again moving it somewhere else but in this instance I want to keep everything in its current location because I've got lots of front ends and I've got loads of stuff using it from that location. If that makes any sense. Am I just talking out my ass at this moment in time? Probably. But I'm going to do that anyway. Okay, next thing it's asking us, metadata for your games. As I talked about, it does all this automatically. Once I add this system for every game, it will find the database, uh, the metadata from uh, uh, Games Database or Wikipedia or from, well, 
various other resources. It will download the artwork if it's available. It will download a write-up. It will download the stars. It will tell you when it was made, how many players it's been done, who published it, what making is, the actual name of the game, when it was released. It goes on forever. There's so much information that can be sourced. And not only can it be sourced and given to you, but it can sort by that data as well. We'll cover that in a second. But yeah, basically what they're saying is, do you want to use that? Yes, of course I do, because that's the whole reason of me using this. So I'm going to click next. Okay, next thing it's asking, would you like to download the images for your game? So what it can download is not just the box art, but it can do the, the front box art, the pack box art, clear logo, fan art, screenshots, blah, blah, blah. Do you want to do that? I would yeah, click yes, because to be honest, it's not going to take up that much space. You know, it's, 19, it's not 1990 anymore. We haven't got, you know, two gigabyte hard drives. We were into t the terabyte era. And even if you did download all the art for all these systems, you're not going to make a dent on a terabyte hard drive. You know, you're probably looking into the uh, tens of gigabytes rather than the uh, hundreds or thousands, depending on, of course, what kind of systems you're going to be setting up. Um, okay then, so next. Would you like to specify any custom options? Um, again, depends on the system that you're setting up. You may want to go into this kind of stuff, but when it's 99% of the time, you just should be clicking on the default, which is look for a PDF file if there's one available. I wouldn't mind having a look at the game manuals. So in this case, finish. Now, what it's going to do now is, unlike many of the other front ends, it actually uses kind of a, a what I like to call fat match because it's a, I don't know, it, it basically looks for the name of all the ROMs that you've given it in that folder. It looks at the database for that system and all the games that are available, and it tries to marry up and match up all the game names in its database with the games that you hold. So as long as you've not got anything too mental, and in other words, it's a standard kind of format for the games. And to be honest, most downloads at least have the full title in there. I mean, don't get me wrong, if you've just got a code as the name, then you probably ain't gonna match up unless you've got something like MAME, which actually uses a code format, but one which is, you know, unique to each game and is a standard. Uh, that's the only kind of way that you probably get away with that. But basically, common sense, guys. It kind of marries up the name of the game with what it holds in its database, and it tries to match them up as per. Now, I'm going to trust what it says because I've done this a few times on quite a few systems. My um, ROMs are usually in the no intro format, which gives the full title and the uh, what do you say, the place where it comes from, as in the country and it finds them without any hassle whatsoever so I'm gonna trust I'm gonna go on its word and actually trust that it finds the games because if you were to go down the list which would take probably all day for larger systems we wouldn't be let down put it that way okay finish so now what it's going to do <laughs> with my blazing fast internet is find all the games which marry up to that um, no, game type okay so I'm just going to let it run now download all this stuff. My internet is terrible so I'm going to be here for ages. So I'm probably going to cut straight to this once it's complete and then take you through the next stage of the process. But as you can see, actually adding the system is no problem at all. Once this is complete, all I have to do is tick a few boxes and that's it. It's added to the system. And then I'm going to take you through the functionality of it. So, see you in a second guys. Right, okay, it's complete, and as you can see, it's brought up a error. This is probably due to the fact that my internet is shockingly bad. All it's saying is that it can't find the ROM in the database. So obviously, whatever that ROM is, it doesn't match anything that it can find in the database. But considering it's just added a couple of hundred games to the system, one out of all that, I can deal with. To be honest, I can deal with. I can actually go in there and set all that stuff manually. Or I can redefine the name of it to actually name the date to match the database and it should then fall into place without any hassle whatsoever. But for now, I can deal with that. Okay, so that is how easy it is. Now, as you can see on the left hand side, I've not got the uh, the system set up yet. So if I was to click yes, 278 games were imported successfully. So now on the left hand side, it should show up. 
Boom, boom. So as you can see, now I've got the Sega Master System booming on my computer. Yeah. And as you can see, just by that simple act, it's downloaded all the uh, cover art. It's downloaded uh, all the details. Usually you get like a little screenshot and background and all kinds of things going on. It's all epically good. <laughs> yes. Sorry guys, I get excited about the slightest little things. But that is how easy it is to add a system to this front end. All you need to do now is actually click on it and load it and it will play no problem. <laughs> so what I want to do now is take you through how easy it is to actually use this system. So now we've actually added the games, we've added our systems, we know how easy it is to actually utilize and get things set up in no time to be honest, to get things up and running on our cabs, on our computers, our arcade machines, our HTPCs. Now actually being able to utilize it in terms of a GUI, in other words us interacting with this. It is so easy and that's where I think this guy Jason Carr he's found his caveat he's found his niche in the market for this kind of stuff now as you can see you are greeted with all this kind of information the write-ups the star ratings you can give it your own rating if you wish um, I don't know the years the player count the ratings all that kind of stuff it can all be done and it's done for you but then you can actually utilize the information to your own advantage so as you can see down the left hand side here you've got all the systems that we've set up so far we've got the Wii I put my PC games in there it's actually got all this from Steam so all the information the screenshots and all that kind of stuff it's all there for you so what you can then do is take that one stage further so where it says up at the top here so far it's sorting by platform what you can actually do is sort it by loads of other things also so if you've got any favorites you can sort it by favorites if you've got developers you can sort it by developers so not only is it doing it for the system but it's doing it for all systems whoever developed this game um i don't know if you've got any uh, star ratings regions actual ratings publishers if you've got any publishers that you like doing it the so the list is endless and not only is this list endless but you can also make your own go into custom down here and as you can see at this moment in time it's only got all so it's showing all the games that's available so at this point in time with one of these few systems put on I've got a choice of 4,543 games it's showing them all at this moment in time what I can then do is click on the box here and I can sort by all these or a combination of them all so I can sort by genre the rating the actual title of it uh, the play mode the series the status the source number of players when it was added my favorites I can put them all into an order of one of each a combination of the ball or a combination of some the, the possibilities are endless you're only limited by your own imagination <laughs> I love that little saying. Okay, so I think we've covered that. I think I've blown this one's trumpet enough. And, well, yeah, th that is what we've got. That is what we've come up with. And Jason Carr, an awesome thing this is. Now, the good thing is, also, this is free. Everything that you've just seen is all free. Now, I do have the premium version. I'll go into more detail in that in a second. But that does add more functionality to it. But everything that you see in this is actually free. Uh, I believe, let me have a look. I'm still learning this myself, to be honest, guys. So I'm no pro. I'm not going to blow me on trumpet too much on this. But apparently, if I was to press F11, I get this full screen. Uh, you can then lose the boxes on the side. You can lose all this stuff down the side. And you can actually start going into it. And it's to make it look a little more better and a bit more fluid. Um, but this is all free. You know, you can zoom in, you can zoom out. Apparently, if I do control plus plus, I can make the boxes bigger and smaller, depending on, you know, what I want to do. But let me get out of this for a second. F11, back to normal. I'm still learning this myself. Um, but yeah, there's, there is so many options that you can go through. You can change the colour, you can change the layout, you can change the systems that are added, um, the way it's brought to you. And go on forever. Basically, go into view, find the setup that you want. However, guys, if you go to the website, here is the website. Uh, link in the description down below. It will take you through, well, all the features that I haven't added. So as you can see, 
by this screenshot you can change the colors the layout all the kind of stuff and it's easy to do everything that I've shown you is free now if you were to pay for the premium version you get an extra little addition you get big box now big box is where this I feel comes to life and to be honest it is worth the money now take your own time go through this website make your own opinion take the free offer and have a look download it set it up see if it if it, it floats your boat see if it's good enough but remember that actually to me is kind of like the I don't know the config menu the way I get it all set up what actually I would use as a front end is big box now let me just show you in real time what big box is all about now you can load big box from its own executable file within the folder and, you know you can put it up just as you know launch hyperspin game x maximus arcade all that kind of stuff you can just load it as it is from its own you know front end um, however you can also get to it from here with this little tab at the top here now if i click into this it will reload uh, well into big box and there you go this is big box this is basically a completely user-friendly version of what we've just been looking at so this is the more instinctive version now the media is set up a lot better so many options you can go through for this so at this moment in time it's showing me the yeah, you know the Nintendo at the bottom down there it's showing the recent if I was to add favorites it would show it just above there um, it's it's really good and it's just a case of up and down left and right it's all made really user friendly and yeah, it really does take it to the next level so let's say for example I don't know let's have a look at Nintendo Entertainment System let's go in here as you can see it's got the box art it's got the actual write-up it tells you how many times it's been played it tells you about the game itself in words it shows you the videos and everything that goes with it Sorry, it's quite loud this to be honest. It's exceptional in what it does. And all that is done for you. Sorry, it's really loud when I'm trying to speak. All that is done for you. You can add the videos yourself if you wish. You can go to MU Movies, uh, Circo, the guy over there. He offers, I think it's a gig a day, and that basically will, well, it's almost an entire system, I believe, a gig when it's compressed. You can download all the Nintendo uh, videos for that day. Uh, if you make 20 posts, I believe it is, then he will up that to 1.5 gigabytes a day, which definitely is a system, well, obviously, depending on what system you're working on. And then you can download all the art and everything. But all the templates, all the information, all the screenshots, the box art and everything, it's all done for you anyway. All you can then do is take it up one stage further, add in your own artwork as you wish. So let's say, for example, we just added the master system. Now this is what will load as default if you was to use the on, well, the, the scraper as is. Okay, so it gives you the screenshots, it gives you the box art, it gives you all the information. Everything is there for you and it's done as standard. Again guys, there's no messing around, there's no tracing down, you know, I don't know, Master System box art, um, all the screenshots, all the information, it's all done for you. And that's what I think sets this differently from well, all the other front heads out there. It all a pain in the ass to be honest. This one, different. Okay, let's get out of this bit. Let's have a look at the Turbo Graphics 16. As you can see, the fan art comes up at the back. It's almost like it's from, I don't know, uh, Cody, uh, ROM Launcher, all that kind of stuff. It goes in hand in hand with that kind of setup. Cool game, Battle Royale. But yeah, it really does take it to the next level. I always say that, but it really does. Um, if you want a quick setup, no hassles whatsoever this is the way to go now for this big box version as in what you see right before you now this is twenty dollars now i know it's steep and i i always try and make you um 
Well, I always try to bring you everything for free. And to be honest, everything that you've seen before I loaded up Big Box was free. And it can look a lot better if you spend a bit of time setting it up the way you want. So to be honest, all the functionality, Jason Carr has made it so all this functionality, all the looks, all the downloads, everything is free. The only thing he charges for is when you get this functionality. When you start messing around and you get all this kind of appearance, this is where it's 20 bucks. And, you know, I think it's worth it because, yes, it's 20 bucks, but it's 20 bucks forever every update that he makes and to be honest he does update this quite often 20 bucks now and it's done that's it you know for the rest of your life you can embrace this front end forever so that is this to be honest that is the way it is let's have a look at the Wii let's see if we can load something up I don't even know if I've configured this correctly to be honest let's have a look at I don't know um, Lego so as you can see, you've got the uh, the video, you've got the box art, you've got the write-up. Everything is done for you. I cannot believe he's managed to do this without any hassle whatsoever. Let's actually see if I've configured this correctly and uh, we can actually play it. Let's see. That's looking good. Yes, there we go. There is the... Uh, it all configured there is it launching it's almost seamless you know you can have this for every system that you own you can probably set up I don't know a system every five minutes the only thing that takes time with actually setting systems up on this is configuring your controls in the emulator and the actual downloading of all the box art, all the cart art, and all that kind of stuff. That's the only thing that takes long. And to be honest, that all depends on, obviously, your internet. Now, if you've already got box art that you want to utilize, let me come out of here because it'll take forever. If you've already got box art that you want to utilize, if you've already got cart art, if you've already got fan art, or you want to add your own, again, it's all user-friendly. I'll take you probably take you through that in later videos, but it's just a case of drag and dropping it into a, into a folder. If you want to use your own videos, again, drag and drop it into a folder. They don't even need to be named correctly. As long as they're along the same lines, it's good to go. This is how this excels itself from the others. Now, look forward. In the upcoming videos, I'm going to show you how to utilize this with Rocket Launcher. So if you've already got a hyperspin setup already in motion, or you've got one and you just want to give this a go, I'm going to show you how to make it so basically you don't need to do anything. You just install this program, link it to Rocket Launcher, and everything's already up and running. Because if you think about it, Rocket Launcher launches your games, it controls all your media, it controls all that kind of stuff when it launches. This is just a front end which tells it to launch. So, in essence, you don't need to set anything up. You just need to tell it to say, ah, oh, don't bother using an emulator. Just tell Rocket Launcher when you want to launch something. Easy as pie. So I'm going to take you through that in later videos because I think we'd, we've dragged this up. We've licked Jason Carr's ass enough today. I think, <laughs> but, but I think he really has done a top notch job and he deserves all the praise he gets now if it's a good person i believe that he would find it within his heart to give us some uh, free keys some premium keys to give out to you guys but of course uh, that's his wish i will not bully anybody into anything i don't ask for any uh, comebacks or anything of all this stuff that i do it's all up to you guys with their praise and your likes and your subscribes that actually makes this what it is but thank you, Jason Carr, even for the work that you've put into this stage. It is exceptional. And your front end sets yourself apart from all the others. You have found the niche, my friend. You really have found the niche. And that's why I intend to follow through with a few more videos along the this series, because I think it deserves it. And I think this is a very valuable option for people who just want to get set up. No hassle, no issues, no bothering around chasing things down for 10 years just to get up and running this is straight out the box up and running front end madness <laughs> so there you go thank you very much jason you really have done a good job right look forward guys uh christmas time is around the corner and i'm working on i'm trying my best to get you the biggest ever christmas present that is available that i can get my hands on for you guys and it's going to be available for everybody so please look forward to that 
video is imminent now please as always please like please subscribe take a look at my Facebook channel I try to give out as much information on there as possible ie in terms of games ROMs and all that kind of stuff because I'm limited to my exposure that I can put on YouTube so look forward in the future guys lots more to come as always and most of all guys most of all Merry Christmas <laughs> Laters.